I remember when I first started editing photos, I used to get so confused about which edit to do first. I could never know if I should do the curves first or the HSLs or what order do they go in. And then if I did something in curves, does the HSLs undo that? And then it creates like this conflict in your edit. And I always found it a bit tricky. Now, over the years, I created this sort of process. It's kind of like actionable step list, if you like, of the things that I do in which order and why. And in this video, I wanna share that with you because I honestly do think that this will help you a lot with regards to simplifying your editing workflow. Now, before I go any further, just remember two things. The first one is less is more. Never over edit your photos. It's so easy to say I over edit my photos all the time. I have to take a step back and then dial everything back a bit. So if you think you're happy with your image, take a step back, come back later and I can guarantee you'll probably dial a few settings back. And finally, there is no right or wrong way to edit. Sure, there are preferred ways to get to your end result, but overall you can you can do all the editing just in curves if you know what you're doing. You can do everything in HSLs, all the sliders, etc. Basically, what I'm saying is there are many different ways to get to the end result. This is just my way of doing it. If you have your own way, do write it down below. But um, that's it. So with no further to do, let's jump into the first step. The first step is what I like to call setting the baseline, making sure that you have a good starting point for your edit. There's no point editing a photo that has the wrong white balance or is completely underexposed. So the first thing I will do is check your white balance and check your exposure to make sure they are roughly correct and roughly where you want them to be. Now in this particular image, which is the bus and the cyclist, I am actually happy with the exposure and the white balance. Now. In many cases, the cameras are very good at getting both of those correct, but it's still good to check just to make sure because if you start editing with an image that's underexposed and too warm, you're just going in the completely the wrong direction and you'll end up at a dead end. Sure, you can correct it later, but maybe you wouldn't have made certain editing decisions if you started with an image that was properly exposed in the first place. So. To do that, I literally just use the general white balance slider. Now, I'm happy with this, so I'm gonna leave it. And I use the general exposure slider as well. Again, I'm happy with it, so I'm gonna leave it. The next thing I do is I check the my, um, lens correction uh, option. So it's called optics here in Lightroom. I enable everything just to make sure that any uh, issues or corrections with the lens or the chromatic aberrations are done early on in the editing process, switch them on and forget about them. The next thing is to make sure that the image is overall straight. So to do that, I go into the crop and I just roughly straighten the image to what I think it should be. I don't go into too much detail here because I'll fix that in a minute. Just like a rough straighten, straightening of the image is what we want here. Next step is the geometry. So the geometry section in Lightroom effectively looks at your image and says, well, these lines should be straight, such as let's say the columns or the posts in the image, and these lines should be perfectly horizontal. Now, whenever you take photos, especially using a wider lens, you can get a degree of distortion. How or why, I don't know. I'm too dumb to understand it. All I know is that it just doesn't look as good in some scenarios. In this particular scenario, I can go into upright here, click auto, and as you can see, it just straightens the whole image out. Anything which is horizontal is now horizontal, and everything that's a vertical is now properly vertical. The final step is to sort out the crop. Now, typically for this, I will just have it roughly like here, do a quick edge check to make sure there's nothing sticking out or weird in the edges of the frame. But overall, I think that is good. So we now have a solid baseline done. The image is properly exposed with the right white balance. We have the crop sorted, it's straight, the lens corrections are on and the geometry is good as well. This is our baseline, this is our starting point for more editing. 
which we're going to be doing in the next step. Step number two involves creating the biggest edit first, or in other words, setting the direction of the edit. So this is where you can apply a preset. This is where you can apply different color profiles. You can also do the biggest tonal adjustment or even change the entire white balance of the image. Now, the reason I do it first is because it's much easier to slap on a big effect to and then use the rest of the editing to sell that effect rather than edit the image and then slap on the big effect after and then have to redo all the little adjustments and edits to try and sell that effect. So in this particular case, what I'm going to do is first of all, apply a color profile. Now, if you don't have a Fuji camera, you've got the Adobe profile such as landscape, neutral, um, portrait, etc. For this, I'm going to use the Fujifilm profile, which is Pro Neg High um, or Standard. <coughs> Actually, I'll use Standard, a um, bit of a lower contrast, quite like that. So that's done. Next, I want to exaggerate the light coming from the right hand side. So I'll create a radial adjustment, like so. I'll then boost the exposure slightly and then warm it up. Like so, maybe just increase that and then slightly reduce the contrast and reduce the blacks as well. Okay, so we've now got London. We've now got the main initial big adjustments done apart from the tone curve. I've not done that. So if I go to tone curve, I can set it like so. So for this, I'll probably just do an S curve with a bit of a fade just to add some of that contrast back in. I think on this image that will look quite nice. Maybe just boost the shadows actually a bit. And then highlights and then drop that down like so. Overall, I'm happy with where I am with this edit. We've got the color profile. We've got the source of light coming from the right hand side. We've got the tone curve. And overall, this is a very good starting point for the image. So if I go before and after, we're making good progress with the photo. So the next step is color. When it comes to dialing in the color, I personally use the HSL hue saturation luminance sliders that you get in Lightroom or pretty much any good editor. So if you go into color, select the color mix, now, without going into too much detail, what HSL does, it adjusts the hue, saturation, and luminance. So hue effectively takes your red color, pushes it towards orange or towards, let's say, purple. Then it takes the saturation, either boosts it or reduces it, and obviously the luminance, which is how bright anything with that color is. So in this particular case, we've got the bus. If I click on the red, and then I wanna actually maybe move it just a bit more towards the purple side just to really boost the red in the in the image um, in terms of the overall saturation I'm quite happy with that but what I can do is just boost the luminance of that just to make the bus pop a little bit more overall looks good I'm happy with that now move on to the orange this is where I want to give you a bit of caution so if you're doing anything with skin tones avoid adjusting the hue of the orange slider the reason for that is because it's the quickest way to ruin the skin tones now obviously if you've taken a photo with the wrong white balance or the skin tones are just not correct you adjust it here but if they are good then just don't mess around with it in this particular case there's not many skin tones um, to worry about so I'll just move it around to see what I like. To be honest, I'd rather have it in the middle. Boost it a bit and then just reduce 
the luminance ever so slightly like so. Happy with that. Yellow, um, I don't think, no, I'm happy with that. So there's not much green in the image, so we can skip that. We'll go straight to blue. And to be honest, I wanna increase the blue and I wanna darken it down as well, like so. I want to really exaggerate the shadows by making them darker and more blue. Now, did this scene look like that in real life? Probably not, I don't remember, it was a while ago, but probably not, certainly wasn't as blue. However, I do think this adds to the image. In terms of the hue, I don't wanna push it in any direction too much. I mean, maybe just a bit towards cyan. Okay, I'm happy with that. Purple, magenta, leave them alone. So, in this step, we've dialed in the color, we made sure that the parts of the image that we want to sort of pop out, do pop out, and that overall it looks how we want. So if we do a quick before, which is where we started, and after, as you can see, we're already getting a nice look to our photo. So with this out of the way, let's move on to the next step. Now we're gonna have a look at adding a look, so to speak. What people usually mean by that is color grading or adding split toning to the image. There are two main ways of doing it. The first is the traditional split tone where you simply introduce colors into shadows or highlights. And the other one is using tone curves to do the same. Now, I personally prefer to keep the two separate, certainly for edits that I'm doing from scratch, because it just helps me to process it and to kind of categorize it and uh, spread it out, if that makes sense. So to do it on this particular image, we go into effects, scroll down into split toning. With split toning, basically it's like color, color theory. So you can either add warm tones to the highlights, cool tones to the shadows, or you can flip it around, or you can add like adjacent colors into shadows and highlights to push the image in a certain tonal direction. So for example, a color contrast would be, let's say oranges in the highlights and blues in the shadows, or to push the image in a whole different direction, you can have, let's say, reds in the shadows and maybe yellows or oranges in the highlights. For this particular case, we already have a very strong color contrast. So I don't think we have to do too much. Now, I do want to add a bit more highlights. So if I take it into orange, and just boost it a little bit like so, to be honest, I am happy with that. I don't think I need to do any more. Certainly if I start messing around with the shadows, but like here, it's gonna go a bit too much. So I will leave shadows at zero and just have a boost of oranges in the highlights. And I think overall, I am happy with this look. Next step is the finishing touches. So. There's a reason why I didn't touch the sliders in the sort of basic editing panel first, and that's because those sliders are great for fine tuning your image rather than doing all of the main editing first. So if you look now, we're like 80, 90% there, but all your sliders are still bang in the middle, so you have so much flexibility. Now, I'll be honest, I don't think there's a huge amount that I want to do to this photo using these sliders. Maybe just drop the blacks a bit. Maybe drop the contrast a little bit. Highlights, now they're good. I don't really need to do anything more on the highlights. I mean, you have the reflection of the bus that's blown out, but it is what it is. Um, you can, I guess, do a very quick radial filter here and then see if we can pull that back a little bit like so. That's actually not bad at all. And overall, I am actually quite happy with that. I don't think I need to do anything else. And that's a good thing about keeping these sliders till last because you don't really have to do much. It's just really final touches to get your image looking how you want. Now, this is not it. There's one final step that I do and that is to reduce the clarity. So I take clarity and I drop it down to 
minus 20. That's the average uh, number that I take it to. The reason I do that is because I don't like the overly sharp digital look in the images. I prefer softer photos. And this is a very quick and reliable way to just soften down the image. Now, you can go a step further and remove all sharpening. Typically, for sharpening, for Fujifilm files, I have sharpening just switched off entirely, certainly in Lightroom anyway, to avoid the worm effect. For other cameras, I will just leave it in the default sharpening setting. I don't change it to anything. I've never had to think I need to sharpen this image because it's not sharp enough. I've never really come across that. But that's probably just my style of preferring softer images versus sharp images. Now, that's it. Um, what I would typically do in this case is take a step away, go, you know, go to the gym, go have a drink, go have some food and take a step away from the image. I will then come back with fresh eyes and most of the time there are, there are a few little changes that I think I need to make or certainly dial back with regards to over editing. And that is my overall process. If you want to be extra, this is where you can export into Photoshop and then maybe remove a few imperfections via cloning some things out. But again, I don't do it that much um, at all, to be honest. So that's it. If you have found this video useful, please like it. If you have questions about my approach, please comment down below. And generally, I hope this video has helped you out. This is not meant to be a detailed how to edit. This is more of a higher level methodology and process of editing. In the future, I will be doing videos which drill down into specific aspects of the edit. But for now, this is all. Thank you as ever for your time watching it. I hope you have a fantastic day and I shall see you in the next video. See you in a bit.